with you shortly. I want to remind everyone we have specials in the in the uh, concession stand. We've got uh, Wendy and Millie are our first specials. We also have Sloppy Joe's Chili Pulled Pork, Meal Deal with Chips, Brownies, Cookies, and um, I think we're going to try to just take over the pumpkin pie up here. Honestly, yeah. So again, we are moments away as the teams gather here. Senior night, it's also youth night, Steamboat Soccer Youth Night. Uh, senior night, we're going to recognize our seniors, and I'm not talking about Tilly Dupuis and the assisted living. So we'll be underway here shortly. Welcome to Gardner Field. I'm number four, and my primary position is midfield. I've been playing uh, since I was about four or five. I like to play basketball. I used to play baseball and lacrosse. I don't know where I want to go to college yet, and I'm not sure if I want to play college soccer. I see myself 10 years having a steady job and having a family. Outside of school, I'm also involved in working, and I want to join the chess club. My favorite movie is Step Brothers because Will Ferrell is just a a brilliant actor and it's a very funny movie. Last summer I played soccer and went to San Diego with the team. My goals for this season are getting some goals and definitely going past the first round. My goals for life are having a good job and having a family and I'll remember most about being a sailor by the bus rides. My name is Kevin Caster. I'm a sophomore at SHS and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. 
Hi, I'm Joanna Allison with Allstate. My husband, Brett, and I are excited to bring Allstate Insurance to the Yampa Valley. We are so fortunate to live in this amazing place and want to help you protect all that's good in your life. Brett and I are here to provide local insurance advice and help customize an insurance plan that meets your needs. Stop by the Allison Allstate Agency in Steamboat on 5th Street right across from Mahogany Ridge for a free quote or Google us at Allstate Steamboat. We are a proud supporter of the Steamboat Sailors. Let's go, sailors. Hi, I'm P.J. Wharton, president of Yampa Valley Bank, Steamboat's only locally owned bank and proud sponsor of the Steamboat High School Soccer Broadcast. Well, fall is upon us this time for some hometown soccer on the Gardner pitch. Yampa Valley Bank congratulates each player on the Sailor Soccer Squad. Steamboat High School Athletics are an example of our genuine hometown. Yampa Valley Bank, genuine hometown banking. If you're looking for a better banking experience, walk, or better yet, slide tackle through our doors. Remember FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your steamboat sailors. My name's James Burnson. I'm a sophomore at Seamless Springs High School. My number's 21. I play center mid. I've been playing soccer since I've been five years old. I also like to play hockey at the high school. In the future, I'd like to go to college somewhere, probably in Colorado or on the West Coast. I'd like to play soccer in college if I can. And in 10 years, I'd see myself with a good job, making money, hopefully a good wife or a girlfriend. And outside of school, I'm also involved in work at Winona. I'm involved with teen council at the high school. My favorite subject in school is math. My favorite movie is Step Brothers because it's really funny and I like watching it a lot. Last summer I went to San Diego with my team and we did a lot of team building exercises on the beach. We played some beach soccer and saw a lot of girls. My goals for the season are to make playoffs and score some goals. My goals for life are to have a steady good job, a nice house, make a lot of money and what I remember most about being a sailor is the bus rides to away games and the crowd at the home games and also just hanging with the team and making good relationships. My name's James Burnson. I'm a sophomore and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. Hi, this is Doc from Doc's Auto Clinic. When your car isn't feeling well, head over to Doc for above and beyond customer satisfaction and the most expert service around. The techs at Doc are ASC certified and go the extra mile to give you the peace of mind you need to know your vehicle is safe. We take care of you and your family by taking care of your car. We are located just past Moose on the west end of town off of Elk River Road. Doc's Auto Clinic, proud to support the Steamboat Sailors. Sports on FM. This is an The team of Mountain View Car Wash and Detailing Professionals are just about set for this big time matchup. It's the last regular season game of this season, and it is against none other than our bitter rivals, the Battle Mountain Huskies. I'm joined in the press box here from Gardner by Chris Puckett. Chris, how's your day going? It's uh, pretty good for me. It's been a nice day. It looked great through the window from my office, and I'm sure some people enjoyed it outside. And I was just happy knowing that there were people here enjoying it. There you go. I wish I had a window in my office to enjoy it through. We got the senior night here, and the announcing is finishing up here. So we're going to kick it back to the studio for a quick, well, we'll, we'll say two minutes. Come we'll on, say two minutes. Come on down to the game. There's some pumpkin, pumpkin pie down here. It's going to be a good game. All right. We will be back with the uh, opening kickoff. This is your... Steamboat Sailor Sports Connection, KTYV 989 Sports on FM. Also heard and watched on the World Wide Web at SteamboatRadio.com. Oh. You're a pro. Oh, it didn't? I was going to say, you're a, you're a pro. 
Even if, and is it, are they both on? Uh, not now. We were, no, uh, we're good. Our next senior, number 14, Matt Ty Curzon. <laughs> Matt Ty's mother, Linda, and, fa and father are here. Michael, he likes his best memory is Wednesday wing night at Dune and Dad's before their Thursday games. He'd like to thank his mom for always making him wash his clothes and coming to his games. His dad for all the rides. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here from Gardner Field. For those of you who are tuned in online at SteamboatRadio.com, I apologize for the uh, for the echo here, but a uh, little bit of an off day, and I just came in a little early there. And I know the commercials were still playing. Um, over the terrestrial 98.9 and that of course is our sports station for Steamboat Sailors High School Sports tonight it's soccer it's senior night and we are here from Gardner Field where your sailors will be taking on bitter, bitter rival Battle Mountain from just down 131 and I'm joined of course by none other than the legend himself Mr. Chris Puckett yes legend again and I'm going to go ahead and keep saying that it just rolls right off the tongue Chris, I love how are you? that nickname just love it <laughs> excited to be here for this game we keep hearing about how long it's been. It's been a long time since we've beaten this team. Um, we were we lost down there at their home 2-0. Of course, we they missed a couple of penalty kicks, which is unusual. Game probably seemed closer than it was, but you never know what's going to happen. That's why they, we play these games, and there's a good chance with home field advantage and the uh, extra inspiration from Sunday. I mean, from uh, senior night and then youth night and halftime, uh, we should have some good energy here at the field, and hopefully it carries them through. I really am looking forward to this one because. It's just going to be something to behold. I think that Battle Mountain had probably their best game, and I talked to Brian about this in the in the pregame interview we chatted, and probably his best matchup. Because when you look up and down some of their common Western Slope opponents, Glenwood scored, uh, Summit scored, and these are teams that we've beat, and so I feel like it may have just been one of their best performances. And, of course, you remember, we were both down there. It was a great matchup. And uh, they just seem to be flying all over the field, they being, of course, Battle Mountain. I also think they were confident being at home, hadn't been beat by a Western Slope team. And our team has a little bit of a thing with them, knowing it's been a long time since we've beaten them. But I think they're getting over that. They've talked about it. They realize that they've got to get over that feeling that they're better if they're going to have a chance to win. And uh, we should see them come out. We, you know, Murphy's going to be relentless tonight trying to get that goal record that we, you read about in the paper today. And... Um, it should be a really good matchup. I think being at home should make the level it a little bit, and it should be a great one to watch. There's just so much going on this week. You alluded to the fact that it's senior night. Of course, we have the youth night during intermission, and we're also at homecoming week. So it's just a loaded, loaded agenda here for a Thursday night soccer. I think that the fans will definitely be filling up. So make your way down if you're in the area. They've got Sloppy Joes. That's assuming they've all got dates to homecoming, but I think they probably all did a good job and asked somebody. I mean, you'd what hope. You, you would hope. You'd hope. <laughs> <laughs> and so, again, come on down if you can. If you can't, keep your dials locked in. This is KTYV 98.9 Sports on FM, your Steamboat Sailor Sports Connection. Terrestrially, of course, that is 98.9. You can listen and watch the game online at SteamboatRadio.com. It should just be a fantastic matchup here. And Chris, I mean, just kind of going over some of the numbers, obviously these two teams, when you go down, I mean, you don't see it in front of you, but I think there's three goals separating them. I think uh, Battle Mountain's got 61 goals for, we've got 58. They've got 15 goals allowed, we've got 16. So these two teams are just neck and neck in terms of their numbers, but the really big... Uh, the really big measuring stick is, of course, your wins and losses. They're undefeated in league play still. They're 11 and 0. They're 12 and 2 on the season, but 11 and 0 in league play here in Western Slope league play. And then we are, of course, 10, 3 and 1 on the year with an 8, 2, 8 and 2 record in league play. Yeah, I think if you, if you look at it like. Um, if you look at it, at the, I would focus, if I were Rob, on the two, where they've lost two, and to say they are beatable. Of course, I think our team, we've seen them play a couple times where they've been really good on defense and supporting each other. One guy gets beat, and there's another guy filling in behind, and where they've been just very aggressive on offense and really quick to the ball. A couple of the, uh, one of the rifle games in particular, and some other times where they've been great. And so... It's, it's just going to be a great game. I know that we could have had more than 58 goals had we not tried to pull up on some of those games where we were outscoring the teams by a lot. So that doesn't really mean anything, but uh, 
the points against is kind of sim is very similar, and I think that's important to know. And we've got a chance tonight, so. Absolutely, should be a good one. I was asking if uh, if it's too loud, too soft in your ears, or if you're all set, making sure we're cooking with gas, as Brian would say. And we are. Absolutely. <laughs> So for senior night, your Steamboat Sailors donning their home white uniforms, red numbers, and trim. The other side of the ball, it's Battle Mountain, and the Huskies are in their away blacks with gold numbers and trim. And uh, do you, do you, can you remember back, Chris, to how difficult those home jerseys were to get numbers off of? This is much better. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. In, a, in a personal note there, man, that's always so hard going over to Battle Mountain and calling those ones because it's a white on gold and into the evening. I mean, it's just hard to really see anything. Should be a little easier for us, so I won't be making up too many names. But These guys have you know University me. of Colorado Golden Buffalo jerseys here, and they are much easier to read when they're on the road. Of course, our red on white looks good, and that's easy easy to read for you, so you don't even need to put your glasses on tonight for that. I was thinking about doing it, but I think you're, you you said it. I don't need to. I'm going to keep them, on the, uh, keep them right here on the old uh, press box press box table. I'm excited. I think the games where we've started off as the aggressor and taken the game to them has turned out really well for us. The games where we've let the game come to us has been more of a struggle, so hopefully they've got the energy right tonight and they get after these guys and take the game to them. We're going to see right away. Ian Dalen Floor is out there up front. This is senior night, so of course the seniors are all getting their start here. Kosick, Curzon, and Dalen Floor, your guys up front. Connell's there, Kevin Caster. Will Burskins, these are not all seniors that I'm mentioning, just your players. Looks Barry's like I got out. that Murphy starting in the back, too, which is uh, good for defense. He's a fast player, as you know. Um, obviously played a lot of goalies, so he understands the defensive game as well. We'll see how that goes. And he's got the ball. Pass is intercepted, though, and Omi gets a swing at it. He's another one of those seniors here tonight for Steamboat. It's battled for on the far side of the pitch. Man goes down, whistle blows, foul, free kick. This one is going to be for Battle Mountain. Your Steamboat Sailors are right to left on the radio dial here. Just 40 seconds into this matchup. It is a quick free kick coming up for this Battle Mountain team, and they're always dangerous, especially from this range, just about maybe 20 yards back from the top of the 18. They've got a lot of different guys that can get it in there. Velasco, of course, had a heck of a game. And he serves it in. That one's eventually headed wide, but it is off of a steamboat defender, so we're going to have a quick corner kick from the far side of the field again. Remember, your sailors are right to left on the radio dial as I try and paint the pictures to where this corner kick's coming from. And I think that is Velasco who jumped up there. He's going to serve it in again. Now I see he's just waiting. He's that short option. And he gets it. Velasco now gives it right back on the give-and-go play. And the service comes to the top of the 18. Man's waiting for it. Header comes in. And it'll be scooped up by Cruz Erickson as Blake Moeller had the opportunity. And he's got a mop as well. You very rarely see someone try to that short option when they're defended. That was an odd choice and didn't lead to a very good opportunity. But I'd be happy if they tried that all night. Good job from your sailors marking up. And here's Kosick. Of course, Nick Kosick, a man that uh, this Battle Mountain team was unable to see in the first matchup. So that'll be a very big, big uh, player to watch here throughout the evening. Though it looks as though he's a little shaken up here after going down hard, may have stumbled over the ball. This is something we talked about amongst ourselves but haven't talked about tonight yet with our viewers as far away as California with Anna Kay and Michigan with John Hovey. But... Um, you guys get involved if you want to text us tonight or like us on Facebook. But we, when we played down in uh, Battle Mountain, we didn't have the speed uh, and the aggressiveness of Nick Kosick in that game. We also didn't have the experience um, in addition to the team uh, with Will Burskin. So even though we're missing Dylan Worrell tonight, who's very important to this defensive and uh, midfield in this team, Will Burskins comes in and fills in very well for Dylan, even though it's been a while since he played. He's got his uh, touch back and and I don't think we miss a beat there with Will back. So this is a different team than Battle Mountain faced, and they, they might find it harder to beat tonight. Absolutely. Could agree more. Offside called against Steamboat here. And we will have Will Burskins getting a shoulder on this ball, finding Caster. Had to try and touch it back to his line. Got it uh, taken away from him, and it'll be worked upfield. Nice job from Brown getting in the lane. Though it is Battle Mountain who possesses for a moment. Caster takes it back, swings it outside, finds his mark. That's Jake Berry. 
and Barry's got some time to work with, and he's just going to take it to the middle of the pitch himself. Sends one upfield, blocked off by a Battle Mountain player. Chip through now, looking for Connell. Collides, and there's Dalen Floor. He's going for the big kick, and a beauty of it. It's going to be kicked away from a streaking Nick Kosick by Alan Viegas. But a great-looking feed there from uh, Dalen Floor. Yeah, one more step, um, and Kosick would have had it. He apparently is over whatever ailed him before when he fell down on it. It looked like a pretty hard fall, maybe knocked the wind out of him, out of himself. Quick substitution here, just about three and a half in as Gabriel Davis checks in, Matt Tykerzon checks off, and we've got a possession for Battle Mountain. The Huskies work it to their back line. Chipped up and over there, attacking players, intercepted by Davis. He gets his first touch on the ball immediately. Now Sam Brown with it. He's going to have to get away from pressure. Gives it off to Burskins. Swings it up this left wing. Couldn't find Dalen Floor. Gabriel Davis makes a jump on the ball. Great tackle there. And he's got help from Ian Dalen Floor as well. Trying to battle this away from a Huskies player. Can't do it successfully. It's worked the other way by a Battle Mountain. But their attacker tailed oh, by Steve. little shimmy. The shoulder shimmy from Quinn Connell. Threw a guy off and gave him a little extra time. It's the Ethiopian Shim Sham. And there is Connell now, working it up the left attack. Great Wing ball. Again, here's Floor. And, oh, he just had a little too much on that as Murphy Bowman quickly has been moved up into that attacking position. And he almost had him. If Dalen Floor could have put a little more finesse on that, could have been a great opportunity. Big booming kick from Viegas. He's going to get it across the midfield line. Possession after the 50-50 is going to be in Battle Mountain's favor. Nice little intercept there from Connell, though. And Quinn Connell tried for the give-and-go. And another ball that uh, is really showing off that Viegas is just going to be out there challenging him. He's That's dangerous because if anything works our way, any ba ball bounces our way and get under control, they're going to chip it right over his head. 1-0 Steamboat. Bowman almost did that one in Summit on Tuesday and would have liked to have helped himself out and tied the thing up with his 23rd on the season. He sits at 22 entering tonight. And another great feed there from Dalen Floor. And here's Nick Kosick with speed. He overruns the ball, and he's going to send one in and looking for Bowman, but couldn't quite get it to him, and Murphy Bowman won't be able to chase it down. That was a good and selfish try. He didn't actually have a great opportunity. The defender was right on him. So to be able to feed that in was, was a good effort. One thing I think we haven't talked about also they don't have anything to lose tonight. If they lose the game, they they still have the same. They're into the playoffs, but they really can improve their seating with the win tonight. So they they really ought to ought to do everything they can to win this game because that could really make a difference whether they get a home game in the playoffs or not. Because they're already in. It's just where they play in the first round. Work to the near side. Now to the far. That's Jake Barry to Kosick. Up the middle finds Bullman. He goes back to Jake Berry, touches one up to Caster. Good, quick passing here from the Sailors. Finally, though, Caster's pass intercepted. And now some headers on both sides of the ball, and eventually it goes to the Steamboat bench off the dome piece of Blake Moeller, and we're going to have a quick throw for Steamboat. Toss comes and finds Caster. Tried to head it up for Nick Kosick. He had to recover, and a swing and a miss there from the back line. Kosick's there challenging, but eventually taken by the Huskies. They work it back the other way with 33 and a half to go and half number one scoreless from Gardner Field. One thing they do were doing down there last game too with those defenders that were able to pull the ball all the way up and, and go help on offense at times when it made sense and flood the zone. So I haven't noticed them doing that yet tonight but we know that that's part of their game plan on, at times and certainly can put a lot of pressure on our goalie. With the speed that we now have though with Nick on that far side It'll keep him a little more honest, I believe. Not going to allow for Velasco to set up and make as many runs as he did yesterday. Well, last time, not yesterday, obviously. Yesterday. But last match. <laughs> yesterday matchup? <laughs> <laughs> and here comes another attack for Battle Mountain. They're still trying to find their first real good shot on goal. And first good opportunities. The Huskies trying to work it from the far side of the field. And Omi steps over there and... Huskies just kind of faked himself out and just left his own jock on the on the field. Um, just faked himself out there. That was that was fun to watch. Again, I think we take that all the time too. That makes the defensive job easier. Absolutely. Kicked up field now by Cruz Erickson, who gets a big booming kick on that. And there, and Kosick knocks knocks his man over, foul on a free kick. Kosick's going to do that to you once in a while. He's an aggressive player. He doesn't mind contact. He'll, he'll, he'll just as likely knock the wind out of you as himself. <laughs> We've got to keep it PG because John's over there. We've we got to make sure we keep all the fans happy here. <laughs> Under 32 minutes to go here in this first half of play. 
an immaculate scoreboard um, run here throughout the season by John Kosick. I don't think he's made one one blunder. Not one unforced error. Gabriel Davis now tosses in from the near sideline, just about midfield line. Gets right back from Burskins. Fakes it to his back line. Works it up instead to Quinn Connell. Tried to get around a defender. Intercepted by the foot there of Harry Jaff. And Jaffe gets it out of play. And another quick kick off a Battle Mountain player. <clears throat> and that one is going to find the stands. And so a throw in for Steamboat deeper here in the Sailors' offensive half of play. Davis to take it. He's got Bowman. Settles it. Look for Connell. Couldn't get it on the one-touch play. Instead, here's Jake Berry jumping up from his right outside back position. And Davis in there challenging as well, but it's worked up by the Huskies. And here comes Battle Mountain. It's going to be taken and settled by Membrano. He's got 14 goals on the year, dispossessed. Great tackle there from Jason Omi. Membrano not used to seeing that. And here's a chance. Bullman was in there, and Viegas ends up going down. And a chance again. You're talking about it earlier, Chris. Viegas is upset that there wasn't a call there, but he's well outside his 18. And Bowman's just going for the ball. I don't know if this is a good prediction or not, but I think every time Battle Mountain ends up on the ground, they're going to be complaining about it. That's um, that's just a, a prediction. I've been wrong before. Not often, though. Worked now by the Huskies once again. Great little shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact there. And a foul. Free kick called. And it's coming back as Battle Mountain will once more. Is that a foul on Kosick? Yes, it was. Looks as though he went shoulder to shoulder with Juan Macias there, but his best memory, he said on his senior note card, was the, a game in, that where he got a red card. So he didn't say it was because of the red card, but it was on a night where he got a red card. Um, this is his first game back playing for Glenwood, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so he's going off to culinary school when he after he graduates, and um, hopefully he starts a restaurant here in town someday. Going to be a free kick now for the Huskies. Whistle blows her back underway with 29-46 and taken down here in half one. Service is in. It's a nice one, and it bounces free. Good job there from Burskins. The other thing that he adds is that size because he's quick, but he's also got some uh, good height to him. So in those challenge balls, he can definitely get up and elevate and earn some possessions for Steamboat. One thing, I was uh, neighbors with Will and Charlie growing up. They went by our house pretty much every night of the summer to come down here and play World Cup, practice heading balls into the goal, and um, dribbling and making passes with Father Mike. So he's got a lot of experience with the header and, um, and using the, his body to get the ball where he wants it to go. And a shot on goal. Cruz Erickson easily handles it, saw it the whole way. Bowman now is going to challenge for this. He gets a header over to Dalen Floor near side, gets around a defender, and a second touch on the ball sends it out across the near sideline with under 29 minutes left in this first stanza. This is a very different feel from the game down at Battle Mountain. This is a very even match tonight, and it doesn't look like something that's probably going to change tonight as long as our side keeps the energy up. Um, both good teams out here, um, both getting their way once in a while, but also well defended. See what happens here. There's a good opportunity there, but Cruz picks that up easily. Good job. It all started from Juan Macias making a little bit of a run and then sending it to this right wing that was Dozal, who's got nine goals and nine apples. So good, productive season for him. And then there's Viegas again. Just incredi really it's that a, it's incredible. It's incredible. I've never seen a keeper, even from McCauley, who really would come out at times. I've never seen it that far. I think something's going to break away he doesn't expect, and we're going to have an opportunity to score on that sometime tonight. Uh, That's the hope. Otherwise, it's just an extra defender, I guess. But um, our team's done some scoring this year, and I think they're going to figure out a, a way to get an opportunity. Daniel Lopez into the game. Dalen Flores out. And it's going to be Viegas who scoops up. Uh, it's Dalen. That's what he said, at least, when I was interviewing him. <laughs> You can never trust those boys, those high schoolers. It's worked out field now by Burskins again. Great through ball. And Lopez not going to get there. Great slide. Getting back was Wilson Luke. And he just timed it perfectly. But his clearance attempt intercepted by Gabe Davis. Now Sam Ooh. Brown challenging that could be a foul it is. Definitely a foul. Could have been. He's going to give him these. This is what I, I like about the ref tonight. He actually let them have the advantage. And that's probably another foul on Steamboat. But... Uh, Ref letting that go a little bit. 
Versus but like the last enough. game in Summit, we had several times where we got a foul, but we had the advantage also, and they called. Instead of letting us see what we could do with that advantage, the ref just called a foul. And tonight he let it play because rightly so, the Huskies had the ball and had the advantage. Touch to the near sideline. That's all the way across. Throw in Steamboat now. Gabe Davis with a long ball. Great one. He's going to find Bullman. One touch, and then he's knocked down. And it's going to be uh, going to be a game where they're going to let him play, it looks like. I think he's seen uh, enough to know that uh, Murphy's going to at least do what he needs to do um, to try to get a call. It looked like a pretty even thing where they ran into each other. I don't think there was maybe a foul on the Huskies, but it definitely was contact and probably hurt. Wilson Luke looks like he may check off as well. One of the captains here for this uh, Husky squad. See what the ensuing placement of the ball is. Looks as though Quinn Connell will be moved up front. Cole's moved into right defensive back. It almost looks like we're playing a five-man defense here with Will playing really pretty far back. And like I said, with nothing to lose tonight, I would I would hope we'd push up a little more and not focus on the defensive end as much. But um, I've got faith in Coach Bowman's strategies. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, he's the one that scouts these other teams and makes a plan for it. So I'm sure there's a good reason. Of course, he's friends with uh, Coach Cope as well on the Husky squad, so I'm sure that they... Uh, will be in each other's ear about little lies, being like, oh, no, this guy's not that good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're just picking him up, bringing this Burskins kid back because uh, we heard he was eating too many chips or something like that and <laughs> not getting enough exercise. Oh, David knows Will and Charlie both That's quite true. well. That's true. Looks as though it's going to be a foul against Cole. He was a little premature and grabbing at that ball. He may not know about that Kosa kid as much, though, because Nick no. hasn't played a lot of varsity soccer. He's played a lot of great club soccer, but at the high school level, hasn't been um, a playing much against Battle Mountain until tonight. Here once more is Masius. Quick little touch passes and good-looking passes at that. A chance, but great job from Omi, who was right there. And it's worked up the near side now and taken in a good little play by Battle Mountain. Ball, though, eventually worked out of bounds off of Davis and the throw in coming up here deep in Steamboat territory as Jesus Dozal will take this. Gets it in and cleared right back out by Burskins. Throw in once more, this time to be from the hands of Jaffe. And we resume play with the toss. Fancy footwork on display now. Holy moly, jumping around. This is Vargas. And Vargas eventually is going to just run out of real estate and so it'll be a goal kick. But he looked good there. <laughs> yeah, these guys are players. The, the front end of the Battle Mountain team, they all know how to handle the ball and score when they get an open opportunity. So our defense is really going to have to stay in front of them and try to stay tight and know who they're covering. Touch to the middle of the pitch once more. Jake Berry goes up, but he was pushed from behind a little bit. Foul free kick for Steamboat now. Burskins is going to settle it and restart quickly. Swings it upfield. He finds Kosick. Settles with the right foot. Now went for goal, but... Gets blocked off. Jumping in the lane was Gustavo Arona. And it will now be a throw in far sideline for Steamboat. Before we have that, though, Bowman checks back into the game here. Jake Barry is going to be subbing off. Looks like Murphy's back at full strength. I lied. Jake Barry's still in there. I had to correct myself quickly. I, I, he was taking the throw Looks in like there. Looks like Cole may have come off on that one. Let's my bad, it. my bad. I take that one. <laughs> Big booming kick now from Viegas, and it's going to be worked off the head of Burskins out of bounds near side right around midfield, throwing coming up for this Battle Mountain squad with Harry Jaffe taking the toss. 22-36 left. Now Jaffe steps off, and it's going to be Wilson Luke in his stead. Luke gains about 10 yards on that throw, and Davis will just kick it out immediately is there a ruling on that I'm really curious because some I mean is it when you just start to I don't even understand it <laughs> uh, what, what's the problem Maybe well I can remember help. in Summit 
There were guys that seemed to gain 15 yards almost on there the is, throw. There is a rule about that, but this, the refs seem to be pretty lax on that and aren't really calling that too close where they throw it back in. But players will generally get as much leeway as they can. It's up to the ref to try to bring them back. You rarely see the player move back further than they have to pass it. Quick little one-touch from Erickson. Headed on by Lopez. Kicked along by Wilson. Luke gets off the outside of his foot. Throw in Steamboat. Lopez will just leave it off for Davis. And it does go both ways. It's not like it's one referee calling it against, a, you know, one team. I'm not saying that at all. It's just sometimes you oh, see no, ten I, yards, get, you know. Exactly. Where just I think take it. any player will do it if they if they realize the refs aren't really noticing where the ball went out. They'll they'll try to take advantage of that. And like down here, actually, Gabriel Davis had a great throw in, and actually did it as if Murphy was going to make a run. And had Murphy been running from the gun, because there's no offside on a throw in. He could have been there for a good opportunity. I think we'll they see. do it so infrequently that they, they, Murphy might have been a little surprised that that was what happened. Looks as though Wilson Luke's going to be the man that's marking up on the goal score for your Steamboat Sailors. Here's Burskins. He's dancing around. Eventually goes to the turf. Kicked up field by Battle Mountain. Looked as though they were playing um, advantage here. And Steamboat's going to try to attack once more. Omi is the man leading the charge. Will's going to be able to do that tonight because they're not necessarily going to be marking him from the back. And when he comes up, that's going to create a flood situation where they're flooding the zone and, and they'll be outnumbering the defense. They did that to us a lot down in Battle Mountain, and Will could do that for us here tonight. A good-looking offensive development there for the Huskies. It is going to be cut short by the hands of Cruz Erickson. Now Omi jumps around a man. He's going to go up that right wing, and he gets it across or over the defender's head. And Kosick's trying to just keep it in play. He does so. And oh. great hustle there from Nick Kosick. Worked back the other way, though, by Battle Mountain. Great intercept with the left leg of Omi. Omi's going to step up here and eventually just runs into three different defenders. Now a slide from Caster. Couldn't get the ball. Worked instead back the other way by Juan Macias. And Macias takes it up, swings it out to that left wing on the far side of the field. And with under 20 minutes to go, we remain scoreless here. 0-0 zero, zero from Battle well, from Garnerfield. Taken now again by Mauricio Castillo. Castillo gets it on the give-and-go play there to his back line. Intercepted now by Caster. Great little tackle, and he works up the right wing. Again, Kosick tries to turn the Jets on. Keeps it in play beautifully. Got it in the 18. Oh. And there was Bullman, and he gets all ball on that. Him and Wilson Luke. Just I'm sure about. Will be going this at was it. a great opportunity, and he only missed it by one step to have a. They're giving him the really corner. Good. Corner kick. Yeah, I can see how that went off the Battle Mountain player. So a big opportunity, the first real set play for your Steamboat squad here on the evening. 19 minutes and change left. And the corner kick coming up from the far side of the field. Again, your sailors are right to left on the radio dial. Looks as though it's going to be Jake Berry to try and serve this in. Loaded box, six white jerseys. Service to the back post goes over the head of everybody. Got a little too much on it. It will be chased down by Davis. And then... He keeps it in play. Nice job, Gabe Davis. Sends it up to Lopez. He's always dangerous from where he is. Serves it to the back post. And, oh, there's Kosick, who keeps it in play but couldn't get it on frame. Sent up. Again, Barry gets back there in a hurry. But it'll be the Huskies who try and slow things down before turning it upfield. And they get their man on the overlap play. And a quick little run up the pitch. But eventually across that far sideline, that was Moeller. That was a good call by Jake. He put his arm up like that. To, that's <laughs> offside. And then the ref called it right away. Man, I should have known to do that when I was on defense. He wouldn't have to run as far. Just call it offside. <laughs> and it's going to be worked up the field. I think he called it out of bounds. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Substitutions coming out now once more for this Battle Mountain squad. And the Huskies will get fresh legs. Substitution. Your Steamboat Sailors will have a goal kick. As this one will be Cruz Erickson to take this. It looks as though making his way on is Ike Petrick. Ike Petrick. And... Here is Erickson setting it up to the near side of the six. He will survey his options, keeps it relatively low, gets Omi, one-touch volley out of the air, gets it in the mid big circle. There's Caster, hit the back of his head, went the wrong way with it, and now it's Macius once more. Nice little overlap. He finds Velasco, trying to go up that far side of the field, and he does so, but a little too far for Moeller. And on youth night, there's about 18 ball boys over there to get the ball. Very effective and efficient when you got that many helpers. Line up every 10 yards or so. It's going to be worked on the far side once more. Kosick's in battling for it. That's Comes all he free. does is battle. 
and does so well. He scores some goals too. He's got five goals in five or six games. I mean, it's a habit for him to battle, <laughs> and then he and then he gets some goals off too. It's gonna be Caster now. Elevates, gets ahead on this ball. It'll be headed right back, get away between the two teams, and finally Lopez settles. Gives it in to Connell. A little too soft for him, though. Intercepted, sent the other way, and a throw in coming up for Steamboat. Looks as though they finally worked Will Burskins to the back line. And really, I was just kind of wondering when that would happen. I think they were kind of letting him shake some rust off, game rust that it is, before they made that move. But he is now the left center back, and that combination that they have, potentially. Omi now is a midfielder as we speak, but the Omi Burskins combo there is pretty solid defensively. Sam Brown's no slouch. Sam's been, been getting really solid as we got through the season, the second half of the season. He's been super strong on that defense. Uh, only thing he has to worry about sometimes getting there a little late and running people over, but um, he's been very good. Handball called against the Huskies, and it will be Burskins to send this one in. He's got a big booming kick to the near side. Looks as though Connell was wrapped up with man. Sends it up the left wing. He's got Lopez. Lopez fakes it. Now going to have to recover. He gets it to the goal line, chips it in, oh. and Villegas was out there and grabs it out of the air. Big save. It's just bad timing. Our guys were on the ground when the ball came just over their heads while the goalie was going up to grab it. They were coming down and just missed by a couple inches. Good try. 15 and a half minutes left here in this one. Burskins gets it upfield, and it's Omi now. He swings it up to Kosick, and they're going to whistle him down. I think they got it wrong again. Clyde was a little, uh, you got to remember, it's when they kick the ball, Clyde, not where they are when the ball gets there. Tough to see. He was in again behind some defenders, and Velasco, no slouch in terms of speed. He's been able to chase some guys down, and... Kosick right there as well. Want to oh, say uh, we've got somebody come listening in from Florida <laughs> again. From Jacksonville, I'll be down there in, ja in January. <laughs> Grandma Barry and Jake Barry's aunt in Ohio, welcome and thank you for checking in. If you really like what you're hearing tonight, like us on Facebook. <laughs> Follow us on all of the social medias. <laughs> Steamboat Radio. And so, hello to Florida and Ohio. Work to the outside here once more is the attack for the Huskies. Went off of a Steamboat defender as they tried to serve it in. That was Gabe Davis, who was the last man back. And so, just like that, on the other side of the ball, we're going to have a, another uh, corner kick. I think this is the second one for Battle Mountain here on the evening. Don't quote me, though. I can't count past two very easily. 14-14 left here in this first half of play. Still scoreless from Gardner Field on senior night. Well, this is a different game. They were all over us and peppering our goal early in Battle Mountain. Here tonight, it's not been the same case. It's a very even game. Both teams getting some opportunities. I'd say maybe a little in favor of Battle Mountain tonight, but not much. They've had a couple more off offensive opportunities, but it's really been played hard between the 20s here on the field and, and uh, turning out to be a pretty good battle, as predicted. Do you want to thank Doc's Auto Clinic, taking care of you by taking care of your car, Yampa Valley Bank, the Yampa Valley's only locally owned bank member, FDIC. Also Alpine Lumber, employee owned and operated contractor's choice and homeowner's friend. Here's Kevin Castor in the big circle, works it upfield, finds Quinn Connell, settles with the left leg, goes with the right, he's going to go for goal. And that's the right idea, you said it. Now it's Kosick, great slide from Bowman, swings it outside looking for Omi, leaves it off instead for Lopez, top of the 18, here's Lopez, look for the return service, but couldn't quite find Kosick, and it'll be kicked out of bounds by Battle Mountain. That was a pretty aggressive and actually really sophisticated try by Lopez. He bent it across, like it, as if it was a shot, but he bent it towards Kosick. It just was a little too much in front of him, but it was a great Chance shot. in the 18, shot, and Viegas didn't even know where that ball was. But great opportunity there for your sailors. Yeah, this, like I said, this game is shaping up to be a different deal than what we saw in Battle Mountain. They're giving them everything they can handle tonight. I love Quinn Connell's go for goal there. He didn't quite get uh, the air he would have liked to it, but he's going to definitely keep Viegas honest. He's he probably noticed he's out, he's out a little too far out of the box, and I think they're all talking about that. Twelve and a half minutes left here in a scoreless game from Gardner Field. Up come the Huskies back the other way, working up that far side of the pitch. And good job from Barry marking up on him as it's swung finally to the middle of the field. And there is Membrano. He's got the most goals on the season for this Battle Mountain team. And he sends one 
Well, he gave it off there. Do you know who has the most field goals for this Battle Mountain team? Today, Masius. <laughs> <laughs> right through the uprights and just a bit outside. Just a bit high. Just a bit over the bar. Here is Cruz Erickson now. Going to take this one from the near side of his six. The goal kick for your Steamboat Sailors. Want to thank Steamboat Dental Center, dentistry designed for you. Visit Dr. Witty and the team or check them out online at SteamboatDentalCenter.com. Mountain View Car Wash helping the Sailors clean the competition between Town McDonald's and Highway 40. And we are back to action once more here from the Gardner Field. Well, you probably can see it, Grandma, from Florida, that Jake's having a good game tonight, playing very aggressive, uh, making you proud, and also your aunt, Jake, in Ohio listening, and we ho sure hope you put one in the back of the net for those two. You're going to restart this one as Brown was taken back, or taken down from behind there. Now here's Connell, Quinn Connell. He looked up that time, tried to find Bowman. It gets to him. Bowman shoots. Yes! He yes! Murphy oh! Bowman. Oh, that's awesome. Way to go, Murphy. Wow. Goal. <laughs> <laughs> that Murphy was Bowman. Awesome. Absolutely smashed that ball. To the upper left, and he ties the single season record of Mac Knoll at 23 with that strike with there. With no less having the article <laughs> in the paper that day, that might be a curse to some, but he actually made good on what he needed to do tonight, despite having that article in the paper. And uh, congratulations to uh, congratulations to him. We, I know we talked about that record a lot with Cruz Archuleta last year. And he had a chance, but but pretty neat to see this happen against Battle Mountain. First time they've had a lead against this team in years, I think. And here are the Huskies. They're going to try and settle things down. But right now, the Sailor Faithful, they're filling up, like I said. And there's quite a few out here celebrating that first strike. And you can see some frustration setting in for Battle Mountain. Ten and a half to go in this first half of play. One nil. Your Sailor's on top, Murphy Bullman, with the goal, getting 23 on the season. Remember, he's a wow. junior. How exciting. And that's the first time I've done that with the goal thing, but that is a <laughs> lot of fun if you've never tried it. Oh, I, I've tried it once or twice. It's a pretty good time. It just feels good. <laughs> now it's Battle Mountain once more trying to attack. They're working into the middle of the pitch. It'll be Juan Macias who takes it, tries to send it outside, instead intercepted. And eventually there's Burskins with a header. And a nice job getting it forward. Here's Lopez now, fakes it upfield. He's got time and space to work with. Daniel Lopez is going to cut into the middle of the pitch here, but eventually good little backtrack there from Harry Jaffe, and he was able to control a good defensive play there from Jaffe. Throwing coming up as he just decided to turn it outside and kick it out of bounds. Here comes Gabriel Davis, who has that ability to really go deep with his tosses. Instead keeps it relatively short. Bowman gets knocked down by... Wilson Luke. Wilson Luke, um, just short of a misdemeanor assault there with his elbow firmly planted in the back of Murphy's neck. They're going to get a, uh, I think Murphy's lobbying for a PK, but he's going to get one just outside the box. And you know he's going to take this one too. Murphy Bullman is. I might be worried. Oh, it didn't. Send it up front. Oh, he tried to make a quick little pass in, but didn't work. Um, I thought maybe he was going to send one right up into Wilson Luke's face from three yards away. But. <laughs> That'd be something else, huh? Now it's going to be taken here by Battle Mountain after it was kept out of the uh, danger area there off that free kick for Steamboat. Those are always tough, though, when it's deep inside like it was. I mean, it was maybe about the six in relation if it pulled all the way out. And, I mean, those angles are so hard to really work with. Yeah. You know, th I talk about a different feel to this game now, especially uh, we're not in unfamiliar position being ahead in a Western League game, but Battle Mountain finds themselves in a position where they have not found themselves against a Western League team this year down 1-0. Brian Arias checks in as Nick Kosick will take a little breather here with 8-12 to go, and we do have a corner kick for Battle Mountain against Steamboat right to left on the radio dial Battle Mountain kicking from the far side of the field here keeping a low service in blocked off by Barry taken right back by Battle Mountain they try to attack they give it off top of the 18 far side trying to work free and 
They keep it in play for a moment, but eventually it dribbles across the end line. And so a goal kick now coming up for Cruz Erickson and your Steamboat Sailors. Cruz 740. has been relatively untested tonight. He's had a couple saves to make, but they haven't been difficult for him. Um, and as we've seen, he's made some spectacular goal saves so far this season and hasn't really had to stretch out too far tonight. Off of his kick. It's going to be worked up, and Arias was there. Handball, though, called against Brian. And so this will bring it back about six yards, maybe seven yards deep in the Battle Mountain half. Free kick for the Huskies. 7.17 to go, and ticking down in half one. One nil score. Your Steamboat Sailors are on top in this one against Battle Mountain. Work to the near side. It'll be taken there and worked upfield. Nice job from Moeller. Uh, chip through to the back post. And it'll be cleared out. Barry and Erickson both in the area there. Nice job from Steamboat. Good finesse play there. From the great little service. Yeah, it was a really good play. Just didn't quite have the person there. It looks like they're giving him a goal kick. I thought that might be a corner, but they've got a better view down, down there than we do up here sometimes. He's just going to kick it right up to Burskins. Fakes one. And now we'll give an intercepted pass. Worked back the other way by the Huskies. Opportunity here. And it's going to be in the six, or sorry, in the 18. But a nice job from Brown. They're having a hard time clearing it right now, but this could work out well for Lopez. He can get to it. He does get it to Murphy. Handball on Battle Mountain, not, not seen by the refs. Now Murphy's going down. I wouldn't be surprised to see Wilson Luke plant his elbow in the back of Murphy's head again, but that didn't quite catch him to do that. <laughs> Six minutes left here in this one. 1-0 one score. Bowman with the lone goal on the day. Sailors have the lead. Bowman up there with Luke again. And here comes Connell behind. Connell's in. Shoots. Huge safe rebound. Connell's in. Yes! Scores! Oh! oh, yeah. Quinn <laughs> with the header. We knew that was gonna, he was going to get one of those this season. And this time it was really from just a lot of gumption like you talked about with these guys, relentless pressure, and, and it, it went in again. What a great goal. Great effort by the whole front, front line. Quinn Connell with the goal that puts the Sailors ahead 2-0. And he really had, he had the first chance as well. Great stuff from Viegas, but it hops up and Viegas had gone down in the process. Here you are looking about them out and they're having a team conference. They don't know what's hit them tonight. It's been a buzzsaw. Now hopefully our team can continue to be aggressive and take this, because obviously this team can come back. We know they, they could have easily won 4-0 when we played them at Battle Mountain, so hopefully our team stays aggressive, keeps the pressure on. 2-0 as of now, though. Battle Mountain in unfamiliar territory. It's going to be worked by the Huskies off the ensuing kick, and here's Wilson Luke up to the near side. He finds Moeller. Moeller to the middle of the field. Quickly found the foot of Castillo. Castillo into the big circle of Macias, and he continues to switch the pitch as he finds the far sideline. And right now, your Steamboat Sailors up 2-0 against Battle Mountain. They're right to left on KTYV 99 Sports on FM. Want to thank Russell's Auto Salon, your premier full-service auto body shop where you always beat by accident. Call Russell's at 879-1515. Steamboat Ace Hardware, the helpful place for hardware, plumbing, tools, grills, garden, and more. Offering customers knowledgeable advice, helpful service, quality products, and, of course, UC Health at Yampa Valley Medical Center, helping you get back to full strength when you're feeling shorthanded. Viegas. I'm sure he hasn't really been as tested as he has today. Two goals. And, of course, remember, they'd only allowed 15 to this point in the season. This Still is an easy one for Cruz to get. I still think Villegas, is that his name? Villegas. Villegas still has something, a reckoning coming with how far he's playing out of the goal tonight. I still Could think it be something's going to come oh, his way. Wilson Luke with a nice little header. But here's Lopez, and he gets it into the middle of the field. Challenged by Connell. Quinn Connell having himself a heck of a game here in this first half at least. Four minutes, 15 seconds remain in this first of two halves. He's really had himself a great season. Um, if anything, we probably expected a little more scoring out of him, but he's just been fantastic in the midfield and setting people up, and he's ha also had his share of goals this year too. But really uh, great to get that second goal in tonight. Now, just a little bit of an errant play there from Sam Brown. It's going to result in a corner kick for Battle Mountain. He's trying to just clear it across the sideline. Ends up going off the outside of his foot. And so a corner. And the set play will come out top. And the header is going to be headed out by Burskins the other way. 
as both teams get some noggins on it. And another shot, and there's yes. a diving effort That's from Cruz Erickson about. from left to right. And he's able to pull that one into his body and not give a rebound, which was big as well, because there was a Battle Mountain player right on the doorstep. That's here. that kind of play that we know he's capable of. He'll lay himself out. And here him. comes a chance. Bowman, he's in, he shoots. He yes. scores! For Murphy! That's the Murphy record. Bowman! That is the record for Murphy Bowman. If you're not down here at Gardner Field tonight, you just missed a beauty. He gets it. That is awesome. <laughs> the single season record for Murphy Bowman. That's his 24th goal on the year. And he stands alone in the record books for Steamboat. Wow. And that's what I'm talking about. That ball finally bounced our way and gave him a one-on-one. -on -one. And that the goalie was too far out. Gave him a great angle. 3.08 to go in the first half. A complete onslaught in this first 40 minutes. Your Sailors have converted on three different shot attempts. And they are right now... Just slamming down that uh, accelerator. Wow, I don't know if we'd have thought there was a chance for Murphy to get a hat trick against Battle Mountain, but here we are, and he's got another half of play to actually make that happen. He's <laughs> this is really a cool night tonight to see this happen. This is again. unbelievable. What a game, and right now, 3-0. I don't know that there was ever a point in the season Battle Mountain was down, let alone by three. I mean, they've lost a couple games, but by three goals, tough the, to say. The neat thing about... As this team prepared, their confidence was better this week in practice, and they talked about it in the team meeting, that they finally had an attitude that they were going to win. And uh, that, you know, you always talk about, does confidence come before a win, or does win make a win make the confidence? But I think this proves that if you have confidence, your chances go way up. Absolutely. You play a solid, solid type of game. And when you play like you know how you can and you get rewarded for it, it just uh, makes it all a little bit easier. 145 to go now in the first half of play. Gabe Davis, a little misplay on the ball. Eventually got in the way, though, of a run for Cartillo and had help from Burskins sliding in there defensively as a stopper. And Battle Mountain with a throw in. We're not talking about a down year for Battle Mountain where they're in a rebuilding year or something. This is a team that up until this last game of the year has been unbeaten in, in Western League play. We have not been lucky enough to be unbeaten in, in Western League play, and here we are tonight beating this undefeated team uh, on the Western Slope League 3-0. There's still pumpkin pie. There's a lot of reasons to be down here tonight. If you're not down here, come watch this. We haven't beaten Battle Mountain in years. If you're a soccer fan, come on. Come on. Come on down and watch. <laughs> or just, you know, keep listening to Chris with his goal. <laughs> One minute left here in the first half. Wilson Luke will settle this with the right leg. Pretty cool game. I know Casey's Casey is texting in, wishing he was here watching, although he's watching the live feed, live feed, and it's almost as good as being here live. I mean, it's a little bit better, if we're being honest, because you get us on there. I mean, there's a little bit of flair. It is true. The people here <laughs> live don't hear us downstairs, which is probably frustrating for them. Throw in coming now for Battle Mountain. Toss is going to be immediately headed away by Steamboat. Here's Gabe Davis now. Touches it over to Quinn Connell, who's got one of the three. And he'll just clear this one well upfield. Viegas is going to scoop it up in the top of the 18. Ten seconds on the clock. He'll give a big boot to this ball, but... I mean, unless Battle Mountain can do something they can't, Obi will send it upfield, and that is the first half of play. These aren't also penalty kicks either. They're not like goals this that are created chances. There have been really good goals too. Absolutely, Bowman with the pair of goals, he sets the new single season record for a Steamboat Sailors boys soccer team player with 24 on the year. He may not be done. We've got 40 minutes left in this. Great matchup between Battle Mountain and your Steamboat Sailors. Keep it locked in. This is your Sailors Connection. KTYV 989 Sports on FM. Also heard and watched on the World Wide Web at SteamboatRadio.com. Battle Mountain and your Steamboat Sailors. Keep it locked in. This is your Sailors Connection. KTYV 989 Sports on FM. Also heard and watched on the World Wide Web at SteamboatRadio.com. 
Let's go, sailors. Hi, I'm PJ Wharton, president of the Yampa Valley Bank, Steamboat's only locally owned bank, and proud sponsor of the Steamboat High School Soccer Broadcast. Well, fall is upon us, and it's time for some hometown soccer on the Gardner pitch. The Yampa Valley Bank congratulates each player on the Sailor Soccer Squad. Steamboat High School Athletics are an example of our genuine hometown. The Yampa Valley Bank, genuine hometown banking. If you're looking for a better banking experience, walk, or better yet, slide tackle through our doors. Remember FDIC and equal housing lender. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your steamboat sailors. I'm Oliver Caparelli, and I am a sophomore at Steamboat Springs High School. My number is 22. I play right back. I've been playing since I was about five. I also like to ski and sometimes play lacrosse. I like to go to college somewhere in California. I'd like to play soccer in college. I see myself in 10 years being an architect. Outside of school, I'm also involved in skiing, and that's pretty much it. My favorite subject in school is science. Science. Favorite movie is probably Breakfast Club. Last summer, I went to San Diego with my team and played a bunch of soccer. My goals for the season are to make it to the playoffs. My goals for life are to become an architect and enjoy life. What will I will remember most about being a sailor is bus rides and just being with the team. I'm Oliver Caparelli. I'm a sophomore at Simba Springs High School, and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. Hi, this is Doc from Doc's Auto Clinic. When your car isn't feeling well, head over to Doc's for above and beyond customer satisfaction and the most expert service around. The techs at Doc's are ASC certified and go the extra mile to give you the peace of mind you need to know your vehicle is safe. We take care of you and your family by taking care of your car. We are located just past Moose on the west end of town off of Elk River Road. Doc's Auto Clinic, proud to support the Steamboat Sailors. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your Steamboat Sailors. I'm Quinn Connell and I'm a junior. My number is 10 and I play attacking center mid. I've been playing soccer for 10 years now. I also like basketball and lacrosse. I'd like to go to college at Colorado University or somewhere on the West Coast. I will probably play intramurals in college. In 10 years, I see myself with a steady job and a happy family. Outside of school, I'm also involved in hanging out with my friends, working a little bit, and just having fun. My favorite subject in school is math. My favorite movie is The Bodyguard's Hitman because it's an intense movie and it's also really funny. Last summer, I went to San Diego with our team for preseason, hung out on the beach and conditioned. Uh, my goals for this season are to beat Battle Mountain and win the FIFA World Cup. My goals for life are to be happy and to win the FIFA World Cup. What I will remember most about being a sailor is the relationships and the bus rides and just having fun with the, my friends. I'm Quinn Connell, I'm a junior, and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. The team of Mountain View Car Wash and Detailing Professionals is proud to be supporting Sailor Sports this season. Whether a basic wash or a full detail, we know that the key to providing you with excellent service is teamwork and attention to detail. So while the Sailors are focusing on cleaning up the competition this season, we'll be focusing on cleaning up your vehicle. With affordable washes and a wide variety of detail services, we have the game plan to fit your budget and needs. We are located at the corner of Highway 40 and Trafalgar Drive. Mountain View Car Wash, where you won't get a penalty for having a dirty car. I'm Terry. And this is Phil from Russell's Auto Salon. If you need help with your auto collision repair, we make it easy. Just bring me an email and a claim number, and I'll take care of the rest. Russell's Auto Salon, Colorado's premier collision center, leading the industry in technology where we have gone green with Enviro-based paint. Russell's Auto Salon, where we always meet by accident. 879-1515. Russell's Auto Salon. 879-1515. Russell's Auto Salon, where we always meet by accident. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your steamboat sailors. I'm Murphy Bowman. I'm a junior. I'm number 12 and 13. I play 
forward and goalkeeper. I've been playing since I was three. I also do track and field and free ski. I'd like to go to college somewhere on the West Coast. I would like to play in college. That would be pretty nice. I don't really know where I see myself in 10 years. Hopefully just enjoying life. I just kind of don't really do anything outside of school other than just hang and train for soccer. My favorite subject in school is acting. My favorite movie is The Goonies. My goal for the season is to uh, get a home playoff game. It would also be pretty nice to beat Battle Mountain. I went to California with my soccer team over the summer, and I also worked with Ben James. My goals in life, just to enjoy life, live on the edge. What I'll remember most about being a sailor are the bus rides. I'm Murphy Bowman. I'm a junior, and I'm proud to be a sailor. You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. Steamboat Ace is your go-to place for everything you need for your home. Bridget here from Steamboat Ace, and we aren't just paint and power tools. Ace has a great pet section to keep your furry friend happy and healthy. A fun toy section stocked with items for all ages to make the perfect gift. Beautiful housewares, cookware, candles, and more to decorate and add beautiful style to your table. Stop into Steamboat Ace, proud to support your Steamboat sailors, and see all that we have for your home. Steamboat Ace, the helpful all-your-home-needs place. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. I'm Chris Puckett, your Steamboat Springs Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Now's the time to make investments that can help provide money for the ever-rising cost of college. If there's more than one strategy to save for college. Please come in to discuss your options. For a free college cost analysis, call Chris Puckett at 879-1851 or stop by his office at 941 Lincoln Avenue. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. It's time for the Sailor Spotlight. A chance to learn more about your Steamboat Sailors. My name is Brian Arias. I'm a junior in Steamboat Springs High School. I'm number nine. I play as a center back. I've been playing since I was four. I like to play basketball. I'd like to go to the college in CU, SCO Buffs. I would like to play college at Mesa or Regis. I see myself in 10 years working for Tesla as an electric engineer. I am also involved in taking care of my family and working at Mountain Resort. My favorite subject in school is math and engineering. My favorite movie is Step Brothers because it's really really funny last summer i went to san diego with the team and worked really hard in soccer also i've been working at mountain resort my goals for this season is to win league and have a home playoff game and make it past the first round and my goals for life is to enjoy it and what i will remember the most being a sailor is playing for the team and my name is brian arias i'm a junior at the steamboat springs high school and i'm proud to be a sailor <laughs> You've just heard the Sailor Spotlight on Fox Sports 98.9. Sports-related dental injuries account for more than 600,000 ER visits each year. If your child is playing a sport and not wearing a mouth guard, they are 60 times more likely to suffer harm to their teeth. Steamboat Dental Center offers custom-fit mouth guards made from an exact model of your child's teeth. They are effective, comfortable, easy to clean, and also cheaper than a visit to the ER. Call Steamboat Dental Center today and receive half off a custom mouth guard. SteamboatDentalCenter.com. Go Sailors! Sports on FM. This is 98.9 KTYV. Steamboat Springs. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here from Gardner Field. And... Chris? Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. This is the most fun I've had doing this with you uh, in the last two years. What a great time to watch a team beat their nemesis that they just haven't been able to get over that hurdle and beat them. It's been uh, years. I don't know what you're trying to imply about my calls. I thought that we always have a good time. but uh, We always have a good time, but, I mean, this is just when you no, add the I, good time we usually have with great soccer on our, on our sailors' part, it's pretty fun. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, this has just been – something to behold and I, we went back and forth for the first 20 minutes I'd say you know it was just good action at both ends and we were saying this is a great game and then all of a sudden we just broke it open with Murphy Bullman first tying the school record we're going to just go ahead and say that <laughs> and then taking sole possession of it and that's regular season goals regular season goals we do have somebody from California that played in 2001 claiming they had 24 Murphy has 24 he gets another one. I think the debate could be over. 
I almost feel like that first goal by Murphy, I think Battle Mountain was thinking, yeah, yeah, I mean, anyone can get one, but we're still, we got plenty of time, we're going to take this. And then with Quinn getting that header after the melee in front of the goal, and then Quinn, or uh, Murphy coming back with an absolute laser into the back of the net from 20 yards out. On the fly, running as hard as he could. Just amazing goal, but to be up 3-0 on this team, undefeated previously until tonight in Western League play, I just hope that our sailors come out with the same energy that they did and just really lock this thing down. I hope for that continued aggression. We've talked on it too often, but this is a team, especially in Battle Mountain, that you do not want to just go into defensive mode for, even with the three-goal lead. Um, this team is just so potent. So I think that this first ten minutes is going to be very indicative of what what kind of uh, game we're going to have down down the stretch. They got to be shocked right now, but also a little mad. Um, they're they're probably thinking we can we can score four goals on this team. Let's do this. So I mean I don't think this is over by any means. I definitely be watching my back if I was a steamboat player as we get closer. If we're still got a big lead because these guys are going to be frustrated. Um, but I think it's going to be a great second half. Hopefully we can hold on. I think it'll set in early if Steamboat has a good start to it. We'll see if they can do it. And the whistle blows. We're underway with half number two here from Gardner Field on senior night. Your Steamboat Sailors up 3-0 against Battle Mountain, and they are left to right on the radio dial here in the second half of play on KTYV 99 Sports on FM. Remember that we will be kicking it over to the football game, Thursday night football. Uh, following immediately following the conclusion of this matchup here from Gardner, just for the uh, for the listeners, and here's Cruz Erickson now going to take it back into the 18 and force his man Blake Moeller to chase him down. Kills off an additional couple seconds, and he will pick it up and just punt this one away. Erickson with a big booming kick. Wilson Luke gets in the way of that, but right back the other way by Kevin Caster, and now Bowman's in the vicinity and. This is what can sometimes happen. It, it, I think this first 10 minutes, like I said, it's going to be absolutely huge. They're keeping the pressure on. Jake coming from the midfield to try to make a run into offense. We've got a classic situation going on here with number 12 coming up the side for Battle Mountain. Trying to get a chance, and he puts one in. Had it out beautifully. Kevin Castor gets it out. Uh, good to have him in the middle right now. Good, good with that head. And they put one just a little bit outside. That's just a bit outside. Just a bit outside. Cruz Erickson will have this as a goal kick with just about a minute and 20 seconds gone here in half number two. And Erickson will set it up to the far side of the six. Hello to uh, Casey over in Carolina. Obviously, Grandma Barry, who is in Jacksonville, and Aunt Barry, who is in Ohio. Yeah, I had to think about that one. It hurt my brain. <laughs> Here comes Battle Mountain once more. It's going to be Blake Moeller leading the charge. His pass intercepted, though, taken back by Nick Kosick. And Kosick's going to work it up field. And another great hustle play there from Nick. And he intercepts another ball. And here's Kosick once more. Sends it right up, looking for Bullman. And Bullman is going to go down on that one. And it will be a throw in for Steamboat. Bullman will just stretch out here on the near sideline. We have word that pumpkin pie has been delivered to the box here soon. Oof. Um, the last two slices. So I'm just getting some money. I said we'd pay. <laughs> we don't expect any freebies up here in the booth. Here's Jake Barry now. He's going to take this. It turned into a free kick. And it's sent in towards the goal. Bouncing. And there's Bowman. Oh, and he almost had it. Shot it just wide. And almost had the hat trick. That would have been something spectacular. Yeah, the frustration they felt when they played this team last time, and now to be cruising in the second half with a 3-0 lead, but they are not they are not cruising on it. Um, they're still trying to push the lead. I don't think this is a game where they're going to pull anybody out due to it's too big a lead. They're going to keep pushing. Here's Lopez now. He's going to cut back again, and Nutmeg's a man. Sends one across, and oh, it almost got free, but Viegas eventually got out there and grabbed that ball out of the air. Nick Kosick was right in the vicinity. Great slide from Kosick. He finds Connell. He was involved in all three goals. Quinn got one and two assists in the first half of play. Eventually got dispossessed, but Connell chases it down, works it back, and it's going to be a throw-in now for Battle Mountain. It's good aggressive play. You know, Nick Kosick could be playing with a broken rib. He went down hard. We thought maybe just knocked the wind out of himself, but uh, he's very sore on that torso region up by the uh, ribs on his I believe his right side. 
And uh, he's still running hard, so that gives you a little bit of an idea how tough he is. Here now comes Massius. Juan Massius gets free of one man and serves one in, has a header, but it's just going to bounce away from everybody. And Cruz Erickson's out there. He's going to let it go across this, this end line. And it will be a goal kick now. 36 minutes remains. 3-0 the score. And a very good first four minutes of play. And the Steamboat Sailors just need to keep the uh, foot on the gas pedal. We are doing everything we can to get pumpkin pie <laughs> to the booth. We've offered uh, money. We're, we're doing peer pressure. Anything we can do. And there's Viegas. Look at that. He's way out there, and he plays it well. But Actually, was kicked back to him. He was not allowed. Obviously, he's out of the box. He can't use his feet, and it's bouncing around. That's a dangerous play for him. Looks as though they were initially giving it to Steamboat as a throw, and now it goes for Battle Mountain Huskies. Going to try and challenge for this one. And... Do we got a whistle there? I don't know. It didn't. I mean, foul on Burskins. It looks like free kick for the. Huskies. Didn't look like Clyde actually wanted to make the call, but had to. Now Battle Mountain's going to kick this one away. I believe that's Mauricio Castillo. Serves one in, and there are bodies with white jerseys in front of that, and it's going to be chased down. Great hustle from Brown, and he kicks it out. A great effort, and I think that's going to be a foul against Battle Mountain now. Great job from Sam Brown. It does turn into that foul, but uh, that's kind of what he's been known for throughout the season as well as just those hustle plays. But for the most part, probably one of the more composed players when chasing down balls. He doesn't get a lot of fouls. He was such a good defender in uh, junior play in the U14, U15, U10, whatever it was. But Sam was always... That just amazing defender you could count on, and now it's really translating into high school. Foul now against Battle Mountain. Free kick coming. Restart is a quick one. Steamboat's going to try and just continue to push pressure here. And here's Lopez trying to chase it down. Serves it across, and he had a man, but ends up hopping free to Barry. Touches over to the near side. Jake Barry got it over to Quinn Connell. Connell, though, is going to be tackled away from the ball. Kicked up field once more. Barry's going to try and hustle this one down. Does so successfully. Gets a little nudge from behind. Keeps possession. Great job from Jake Barry. What oh, moves. Oh. And eventually Amazing. takes it down, but worked it up field. Now Kosick down as well. And the hustle here from Steamboat right now is off the charts. This is exactly what they need to do to, to nail this down. Nick Kosick's going to take a throw in. 33 and a half to go in the game. Toss comes. Headed out. And the calls for pumpkin pie were heard. It's going to be worked now by Moeller. He tries to switch the pitch to the far side. Hits off a steamboat player. And now Burskins is going to do his best impersonation. Just bodying his man off defensively. And now Cruz Erickson will punt one the other way. Kicks it upfield. Nice job from Battle Mountain, though. Turning it right back the other way. Steamboat again forced to kick this one out from the danger area with 33 minutes to go. And it will be a throw-in for Battle Mountain just in front of their own bench. Huskies decide that the best option was Juan Macias. And Macias is just going to fight for this one. Comes free, though. And out comes Bullman. Nice moves from Bullman. Gives it off to Lopez. Now Lopez tried to streak Bullman once more. Comes a free to Kosick. And his pass back to Bullman again intercepted as well. Here now is Jake Berry. Turns it, fires it, and it looks as though Kosick lost his shin guard. And will recover well, both of them, actually. And now it's going to be taken to the far side. Viegas couldn't find his mark, so it's going to be a throw-in now for Steamboat from the far side, just about at midfield. 32 minutes and change left in this one. And it'll be taken now on the near side. And a shot from Kosick! Oh. And what an opportunity! Punched oh. out by Viegas, but Nick Kosick... I think that shot surprised Viegas because I don't think he thought he could shoot one that well from that far out, and he, he still had to dive back and up to get that. He almost got beat on that. That would have dropped in absolutely right under the bar. Here comes Lopez to serve one in on the ensuing corner kick, and Battle Mountain gets in the lane and bodies off a player fighting for it, eventually kicked out of play. And whistle blows, and it'll be a kick, or sorry, a throw in for Steamboat here deep in the offensive half. As the official makes sure that we're all calm on this front. Lopez 
Is this going to be a corner kick? Yes. They say corner kick, so a little bit better. Bur Murphy Bowman's going to come over to uh, take this one for Steamboat. 31 minutes and 10 seconds left. Bowman was looking for the tight angle, trying to bend it in. Not going to go. Cleared out by Battle Mountain. Put right back in by Gabe Davis. And now it comes free. Man's in all alone. Quinn Connell shoots and scores. Wouldn't have counted. It's an offside play. Yeah, uh, I think he really was. I think he was <laughs> sitting there offside. That was a hockey play for me when I just don't know why no one wants to pass it to me or cover me. <laughs> it's like, I'm just so open, guys. Get me the ball. Here's Quinn Connell again. Sends it up. Lopez trying to streak. Gets beat to the ball, though. Good jump from Harry Jaffe, and Jaffe eventually forced to uh, body off Lopez, who was trying to make it down there before it crossed the end line. Instead, then Lopez though, sent it about 40 yards past the end line, I think, <laughs> to try to preserve a little time, not preserve time, waste a little time. He forgot they had ball boys that could throw some fresh balls over there. But Villegas, though, again, the right with an errant play on the goal kick. I think you just are seeing a little bit of a – a Battle Mountain team that's just caught off guard being down at this stage in the game. Yeah, they have not, like, I, they, I guarantee you they did not see themselves in this position when they got on the bus down in Battle Mountain. And it's it's hard as a team when you don't know how to play from behind as well, especially against league opponents. And here's a chance. Oh, Kosick got a left foot on that. What a service from Bullman. But Kosick, obviously the right foot of dominant, tried to go up and volley that out of the air. Great effort. Got Tried it to do that frame. with his left foot, right? Yep. Out of the air, not easy, and he still put a good <laughs> shot on it. Yeah, absolutely. Great opportunity, but Viegas equal to the task on that one. We've ticked down to under half an hour left in the game. 3-0 the score. Steamboat's on top of Battle Mountain here from Gardner Field on senior night and youth night, and a great night from Murphy Bowman, who's taken... Homecoming date night. Home what? Well, not date what? night. <laughs> you hope they wouldn't be asking at this stage in the game. <laughs> it's a little late, wouldn't you say? <laughs> My son just, just got in under the wire, I think. It's going to be a throw in for Battle Mountain. They're in the offensive half here for the Huskies. And worked back to Juan Macias. Swings it outside to the near sideline. And taken by Barry. Sends it up field, right to the feet of Macias once more. Outside to Velasco. He was the man who really did a lot of those overlaps when we went down to Battle Mountain. Makes a quick run of it. Velasco, though, eventually dispossessed. Worked the other way. Nice job from the Steamboat defenders. Bullman continues to hustle, as does Kosick, and that's really a really good sign when your attacking players are putting the pressure on the back line, not allowing easy exits. Here's a chance, though, for Battle Mountain. Another intercept, and there's Will Burskins. He's been uh, relatively quiet today. We hope Charlie's watching somewhere. Charlie, you'd be proud of your little brother. I know it, it uh, got on your nerves it, in your career here. The, the, you guys weren't able to beat or get by Battle Mountain, some of those great Battle Mountain teams. But your little brother is probably going to do it tonight. So that's, Bowman that's didn't know if cool. he was on side. He's in a foot race with Velasco, going to get there first, sends one through the uprights from a tight angle. He didn't quite know if he was on side there, so he was hesitant to make that first move. Could have opened up a little bit more time and space for himself had he made the stride, but he didn't see the defender that was... I don't think the defender thought he'd be coming to get the ball after yeah. that. Murphy went right by him like he was standing still. Villegas will just kick this one into Velasco near side and worked upfield. Juan Macias struggled to initially control, but is able to do some fancy footwork there. And it's worked upfield by the Huskies to the far side of the pitch. Another overlap play. Finesse through ball. Headed down the other way by Steamboat. And there's Lopez challenging for this one. Daniel Lopez going to turn the Jets on and try and get free of Wilson Luke here, who's into his own 18. And Luke now turns it and goes up field, and we've got a throw in for Steamboat. Wilson Luke's trying to dish out a little punishment, um, kind of prioritizing that over actually playing soccer right now. But that's what happens when you get frustrated. Another steamboat throw. 3-0 score. Your Sailors are on top. Under 27 minutes left now in the game. And it's going to be worked up the far side of the field. Caster jumps up, gets a shoulder on that one. And it'll be taken up by a streaking Juan Macias, but dispossessed. Great tackle from Sam Brown. And he'll just keep it uh, in the Battle Mountain team's half for at least a moment. Now Barry has to backtrack. And he'll head it out, and it'll be a throw in from the near sideline to be taken by Moeller. Blake Moeller tosses this one in, and it's going to be fought for. There's Kosick battling, 
And you know he's in some pain here. And here Nokosik gets the ball. And oh, just a little bit of a miscommunication with Bowman who made that first stride the other way. Trying to cut towards this near sideline. Now the Huskies with a service to the back post. Man's there, receives, headed out then by, is that Barry? Jake Barry's having a heck of a game. He is, he's just taking it to him. He's not backing down. I think these players think they're gonna have their way, but they, they just aren't because our players are playing them so tough and so aggressive. There's Barry again trying to fight through and kicks this one in the middle of the pitch from his back. He must know his grandma's watching from Jacksonville. And is on from Ohio. Surprising. Usually when you're on your side and you try to kick the ball, that's an immediate call. Uh, not allowed to play the ball from the ground, but that's okay. Guess we've got to take the calls when we get them. <laughs> Huskies will work this one back and forth, but they'll keep it in the steamboat half. And eventually they just have had enough and are tired of being <laughs> surrounded by white jerseys. Viega sends this upfield. It'll come all the way in to Cruz Erickson, and he's just going to force... Moeller to come in. Nice job from uh, Erickson. I know we don't love that play, but you know what? In a game like this, I'll take it. <laughs> there we go. Murphy with another chance here. Here's Bowman. Here he heads it along. Gets oh, it towards the goal. Oh, 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 no! Wow! Quinn Cotto with Cotto the goal! Goal! <laughs> 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 oh, what hustle from Murphy Bowman to really start that, that was, thing. That was all hustle and then a rebound off of, I don't even know how Murphy got that shot off to get the rebound for Quinn to pick up, but that was just great hustle from both of them. And I just, you know, this is, they've tried so hard for so long. It might have been like seven years since they've beaten this team and if the dam's just breaking tonight. 4-0 to score. This one comes with just under 25 minutes to go in the game. It's worked up field. The Huskies now have a lengthy hill to climb if they want to try and get back in this one. Steamboat needs to keep the pressure on. And you know Nick would like to get one in there too. He's had some good tries and he had a great shot just a few minutes ago. Would have dropped in. If they, had an if they dropped their, yeah, if they drop their guard for a second, he's going to put one in the back of the net. Jake Berry working it upfield, intercepted. Now Kevin Castor gets ahead on it. Back to the middle of the big circle. Taken there by Wilson Luke, who's now trying to jump up a little bit more offensively, but his ball is across the sideline, throw in for Steamboat. Sailors will take this throw, and it's going to be worked up that far sideline. And eventually it'll be out of bounds off of a defending player for Battle Mountain, throwing again for Steamboat just about at their own bench. 24 minutes up on the clock, and it will be tossed in to Burskins. Will Burskins sends it off, and Cruz Erickson's doing his best impersonation of Viegas well outside the 18, kicks it up field, ends up hopping once then twice, and it will be a throw in for Battle Mountain from, again, the end of the steamboat bench here pretty much. And there's about 10 yards gained on that toss. Up the right wing, chasing it down, though, and a good hustle play from Burskins, who turned the Jets on and was able to kick that one out of the danger area. And now it's going to be fought for. Huskies do take over here. They're deep in Steamboat territory. And now it's going to be turned and fed from Vargas. to Macias upfield he goes. Three different white jerseys in the vicinity, though. Now Quinn connolly has got two. He has some fancy footwork. Goes down foul, free kick earn for you Steamboat Sailors. Battle Mountain is not liking that call. Their fans are uh, actively booing. They didn't like the fact that Quinn Connell was sent reeling through space onto his face and did not, did not agree with the call. Steamboat kicks this one off and finds Lopez at midfield, steps across, goes for the through, and he finds Bowman but couldn't quite control with the left foot. Instead, it's Juan Macias trying for the chip through up the left wing. He's got Moeller, settles with his left leg to the middle of the pitch. There's Mandreno, and of course, Membreno, sorry, worked across as they switch the pitch to the far side, and Lopez is there. Great tackle on the ball, and now Daniel Lopez had to recover as he was attacked, and Lopez eventually works to the sideline, kicked away from him at that far sideline, throwing for Steamboat with 22.15 to go. Deep because in their own a defender territory. that was down there and our, one of our forwards just defending him as he was playing offense. Nick Kosick is checking out of the game here with 22 minutes left. Is that Quezada coming in? I believe it is. Alejo Quezada checks in for Steamboat. Let's go take a little bit of speed and offensive uh, 
offensive threat and take it to a midfield kind of controller. Nice job from Omi getting back. That was one of the deeper chances that Battle Mountain's gotten, getting into it within about 10 yards, and Omi took it away from him. And you can see now they're pushing up jerseys and the quick corner from the far side served into the box now, but bodied out. A chance from range. Vargas shoots one, stopped by Cruz Erickson, and he hangs on. 21 and a half to go. 4 0 score. Your Sailors are on top against Battle Mountain here from Gardner Field. Two goals from Bullman. And here's a chance. Bullman was behind the D, but you can tell he's uh, he's been using the Jets here. A little low on fuel, perhaps. The other thing to think about, too, is when they push people up, if a ball squirts out and you suddenly give uh, Murphy a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with a defender on a break, that's uh, risking going down 5-0, although I don't think that's probably their biggest worry right now. They probably want to try to get back in this game as opposed to worrying about being scored on more. A little so bit of confusion down here. I but think that was a handball from Jake Berry. 20 minutes and change on the clock now. 4 0 the score. Work to the near side. Macias is going against Quezada. A second ball comes on and quickly worked off the field. With in, uh, a lot of with prejudice. And a good job from Barry again. He's going to tackle it off of Macias' foot, but it does result in a corner kick now. From the near side, your sailors are left to right. On the radio dial, chance for Battle Mountain to kick this one off from the near side corner. And the service is up, and bodies fly. Head collide with the ball, but eventually it's Steemo that works it out. Chance from range, blocked off, and kicked upfield. No way. Are they saying handball? They're calling it a handball, but you know what? I am so happy <laughs> that if it's something like this were to happen, it's not at 1-0 or 2-0 taking a chance to win this game away. This team has worked too hard tonight. Even if they get a handball in the box and they get a PK, this is the kind of thing. Cruz saved one and had two Look who's coming to last take time. this. Viegas, the goalkeeper, is upfield to take this one. Oh, man. You don't see that one. I hope Cruz. I don't understand this. I think it's just a little fun. I don't a little fun. know. A little fun, maybe. Viegas steps in and rockets it home, and it's 4-1. to one. Okay, they're pretty excited about it here in the stands for Battle Mountain to be 4-1 and their goalie scored. But uh, I don't think that's making Cruz feel as bad getting scored on a PK as, as uh, Viegas feels about the four that have gone in on him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so Steemo will have the ensuing kick. Clean sheet goes to the wayside here. If we get a penalty kick, I hope they put Cruz up to take it. Absolutely. 19-15 left. And Bullman will restart this one. It's going to be worked up the near side now. Quezada was in the vicinity. And there is Quinn Connell supporting as well. Touches it free to Bullman. Bullman now is going to try and give it oh, back. That was a good try. Right idea. Steamboat's still playing hard, getting to those balls first, winning the 50-50 battles. And that's what it's going to take to get this thing in the books. 20 minutes left, a lot of time. Now here's Barry, got it from Quezada on the give-and-go play, and Bullman was behind the <laughs> defenders. <laughs> you think? <laughs> They're playing a tight line, though. That is definitely going to give him some opportunities because he's faster than tonight. He's faster than most of them. So, I mean, if they can, if they can strike it well and the officials know that it's when the ball is uh, struck, he could potentially jump behind that line that's staying up right now. 18-23 to go. 4-1 to the score now. Battle Mountain scored on the PK. It was Alan Viegas who is the keeper, yes, but came up and took it for Battle Mountain. I was hoping that Cruz would guess right, take it, and punt it into the goal. How sweet would that have been, huh? Yeah. Pipe dreams, pipe dreams. Throw in for Steamboat at about the midfield line. It's going to be tossed in. Omi is there. Hops under him. Gets to uh, Quinn Connell. And free. Here comes Bowman. Let's one fly just wide. Wouldn't have counted offsides. He really wasn't, though, I don't think. I really think he was onside for that one. It looked as though he was right there. You could be even. When you're even, that's actually not off. I'd like Vegas. some. Uh, I wouldn't mind if Casey was to weigh in on that. If he's watching. Now it's Omi. He was, at least for a moment. We'll see if he texts in. I always asked him questions last year. I'm 
talking with. I'm not. I haven't eaten anything. All right. Jeez, Louise. Casey Barnett, always the critic. 17-18 <laughs> left here in the second half of play. 4-1 score, beautiful through ball, chance for Battle Mountain. They cut back, served in, a shot, and Membrano. Leading score, gets a field goal that doesn't count tonight. What an opportunity for Membrano, but he sends it through the uprights. John, you had, John, you've had a fantastic season, but I'd like to just point out it is the second half, not the first. I mean, we don't want to screw up. We don't want to like, mess Kasich's that one up. Unforced <laughs> error season. We're going to give him by because he was eating something there. Yeah, I think he may have had a chance to get some pumpkin pie. I'm not sure. I thought we had the last pieces. Oh. Sorry, John. There may have been, uh, we may have ruined his concentration. and That's not an unforced error, though. That's on us. That's, yeah, a, that's on me. I'll was, take that one. It was forced. It was a forced error. <laughs> so the ensuing kick. Look at that recovery. Excellent job by John Kosick. Counts it out, and <laughs> we're right back on pace. Yep, and now they have nothing to complain about. They got a little bit of time where they didn't know time was. And here now is Battle Mountain. Just over 16 minutes left. Casey did check the replay, and he was off sides <laughs> on that last play. <laughs> oh, I'm disappointed to be um, called out like that. <laughs> we were just asking if you could be on side if you were equal to the man. Sent it, shot, huge save from Erickson. Unbelievable stop from Cruz Erickson. What a service. That guy is just He's awesome. a magnet. Like you said, everything seems to find him when it's uh, set plays. That's been the case throughout the season here, and it continues tonight. 15.40 left, and a long ball attempt just wide. Boy, they're really getting a lot of shots off here from Battle Mountain now. They're going to need to make them count, though. Hopefully we can get some, get the ball on their end for a little while. They're calling for a corner kick, I guess. I think Cruz did touch it, so probably correct. So now another corner. 4-1 score, 15-20 to go. Service from the near side. Sailors left, right, header. Back towards this uh, near post, but it's going to result in a goal kick for Cruz Erickson and company. Battle Mountain's got some life now. Steamboat's got to be really weary of this. They don't want to. I hope they just stay aggressive and try to put another one back there. Here comes Kosick back into the game. Gabriel Davis subs off. Comes in the near side. Over the head there of Quezada. Out across the sideline. Throw in coming up. And Velasco gets a big booming throw on this. It'll be challenged for. And Jake Berry will just chest that one out of play as well. Another throw near side. It's going to be taken by Moeller. Moeller finds Velasco. Settles the right legs. Gets it to Moeller. Nutmegs his man. And some good little uh, short passing there from Battle Mountain. And they continue on the great passes here. Opened up a lane. Vargas switches the pitch, but it's too far. He was trying to find Jesus Dozal. And Dozal, not able to wrangle it in with the left foot, turns into a throw in for Steamboat deep in their own territory. Just over 14 minutes left. And be sent up field. There's Kevin Castor and Murphy Bowman in the vicinity. Gets it off to Quinn Connell. Now to Bowman. Bowman turns. He's got Connell if he sees him. Here's Kosick on side. Kosick tries to backtrack. A little nutmegs his man. Nick Kosick is in behind one guy and eventually just. Almost. What a uh, great try. A great hustle. He's got the though. ball back, though. Great. Oh, great finally. game from Nick Kosick. Two I think on one. Here is Jason Omi fighting for it. Went off of a defender last, and Vargas goes down. And they call for a stop on the clock, 13.38 to go. Ooh. And uh, we've got some uh, sportsmanship. Jake Barry's trying to help him stretch. I think he's maybe knows what it feels like to have a pulled hamstring and wanted to help out. Almost looked like partner stretching. I don't know if you ever partner stretched, Vlad. We do that occasionally for hockey as well. We really help each other out. Oh, always. <laughs> <laughs> you go over and help the other guy on the other team when they look like they pull a hammy, help them do a yeah, partner hey, We got this. We got this, bud. Grandma and auntie <laughs> and Florida and Florida, you'd like to know that Jake is helping partner stretch the other team as they go down with injuries. <laughs> Petrick came in in the gentleman's stead. That's Vargas, who is worse for wear. Toss comes deep here. 
in Battle Mountain territory. Kept in play for a moment by Jake Berry. What possession and control here from Berry. Unbelievable. Clearing attempt goes off Steamboat eventually as Bowman was right there. But great job from Jake Berry. It's going to be hard to score against Steamboat down in that corner. I think that's the main point. Hunter, yep. Here is Lejo Quezada, intercepts a pass. Finds Lopez. Lopez couldn't control initially. Comes right back to him, though. Gets around a defender. Lopez is in. He shoots. Big oh, save from Villegas. Try. But they're going to say that went one across the end line and a corner kick for Steamboat now. And Villegas knew Great that it was, a, it was a struggle to control that ball. It came in with some heat from the foot of Daniel Lopez. And with a 4-1 score, your Sailors are on top and looking at 12.40 left in the game. I know Nick is still going to be looking to get one in. Now here's Bowman. He's at the goal line, sends it into the 18. There is another touch from oh. Lopez cleared out, but Barry's in the lane once more. Jake Barry trying to just angle his man to the near side, and it comes free. Good speed here from Velasco, but there is Barry. Got back initially and at least allowed for some time with Velasco having to pull up. Uh, and great play by Jake to intercept that. This is probably the best soccer game I've seen Steamboat play in the many years I've been calling. It's it's really amazing to watch a team that got pretty defeated in that last time they played and, and what can happen in a game versus when they're completely motivated the whole game, looking like they're going to beat a team they haven't beaten in years, and then just the motivation they have to keep playing hard the whole game is really fun to watch. Quick restart, not going to count. The center official wants to make sure this is done correctly so we'll reset it once more in case you're wondering the USA women's national team's up 2-1 over Korea in a friendly and that's at half well that's a much bigger <laughs> country Korea than the, the teams that were beating the US men's national team <laughs> and off of the set play from Castillo it goes over the head of a number of different players in both jerseys and eventually out of bounds so Cruz Erickson with a goal kick coming up here 11-15 to go Erickson will set it up to the far side of the six. Hello to Chad James, who's listening in as well. It's going to be worked up field now. You know, Chad James didn't used to just listen in. He used to actually be here helping support the energy <laughs> and really helping create it in a lot of ways. But uh, anyway, we need people to listen in to. You know, keeps my keeps me in work. <laughs> it, it just puts a little more pressure on us to keep us that much more professional knowing he's listening. And uh, here is a throw now over the head of Quezada. And there's Kosick fighting for it as well. 1-0 Avalanche against the St. Louis Blues. It's a good try by Murphy trying to get that ball back to Kosick. Um, hey, I need that picture, by the way. All right, you sent <laughs> it to my boss. I want to see this thing. <laughs> Here's a ball now from Viegas. Top of the 18, sends it up field. It goes across the midfield line before falling to a Battle Mountain player. And up come the Huskies the other way. Again, your Steamboat Sailors are left to right on the radio dial here. And it's going to be worked free. Top of the 18 now. Touched over near side. Open man. And a great tackle again. It's Jake Berry. Coming out of the melee is Jake Berry. Nick's going to go get involved. The melee kind of passed Nick by. Didn't get to get involved with it. Um, and and uh, there's a slide tackle with no ball within five yards. But, hey, didn't hurt anybody. I think uh, Battle Mountain despises slide tackles that have nothing to do with the soccer ball. That's what I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what these boos are all about. Now it's going to be a throw in deep here in the offensive half for Steamboat. Toss from Kosick. He was looking in the middle of the field there for Quezada. Now it's Kosick again. Nick Kosick gets around a defender, then lost the ball. Worked to the far side by Battle Mountain. They try and get up across the midfield line with possession here. And we've got just nine minutes. And 15 seconds left here in the second half play. And sliding up was Will Burskins. He gets beat up the far side of the pitch it goes. But the Huskies dispossess. Great work there from Quinn Connell getting back. And he's going to get another effort at it and just clear it across the sideline. Throw in for the Huskies. They after take it relatively five yard, quickly. After a five-yard advantage after the ball went out of bounds, he threw it in five yards forward, which I guess is completely acceptable. Now a quick dead ball. And it's going to be a restart. Service to the back post. Heads are up. Jake Berry gets the most of it. And Here we go. Forward now by Connell. Now Kez Kosick. Kosick from Quezada. Murphy's around. 
Looks to me like Nick was taking out a little heat on number three, who probably deserved it. <laughs> Wilson Luke. Wilson Luke's been dishing it out all night, usually with the spear of his elbow into the back of someone's head, and I think Nick was just had enough of it. Eight minutes to go, rivalry game. Steamboat Sailors are on top of Battle Mountain, four to one. Battle Mountain right now, they tried to push play a little bit here, and they've gotten some opportunities, but really you look at it, and sometimes because they haven't had to, they don't know exactly what to do. It looks as though Brian Arias is checking back on. Yep, Brian's getting another chance. And off is Daniel Lopez. Here's Bowman now. Sends it upfield with a great kick. And it'll be Wilson Luke who challenges. He's just going to extend the hand on Murphy Bowman. Does a push-up, gets back up to his feet. And it's going to be worked up to the near side. Taken there by Moeller. Gets off to Massius. Tries to dance out of a phone booth. Finds Luke's Wilson Luke. Two first names. Wilson Luke again with the ball here. He's going to try and get it to Massius. Wilson Luke's playing all over. It's hard to know what his position is. Shot from Massius is blocked off by Burskins. Quezada up to Murphy. The bouncing ball to Arias. And, and that's now all. Arias got knocked to the ground there. And you can see the uh, blood starting to boil for this Battle Mountain team. Yeah, it's starting to, I think reality's starting to weigh in that they actually could be losing to Steamboat tonight. Worked up to the near side. Kosick's there. Sends it to the middle of the field. He found Bullman. Touches it to Quezada. Quezada back to Bullman. And Murphy Bullman is going to try and cut away from some defenders. Does so. Slides it. Gets it to Quezada. He's got the left foot to shoot oh, with. And good try. Blocked off. Good job. Good defense on By 22. Jaffe. He got in there and got a leg in the lane. That was a good opportunity, though. Sam doing everything he can. Sam Brown to catch up and play good defense. Jake Berry made a great hustle to get back. Now, once more, this is Juan Macias. I do love how Sam is chasing them back out and defending them in the midfield and not just waiting for them at the defense. 6.15 to go. Completely disrupting their ability to get a play going again, which is exactly what they need to do. Battle Mountain just trying to work this one offensively and get something in the late stages. They're down by three to your Steamboat Sailors. We've ticked down to under six minutes left in the game. Feels good. I don't want to yep. <laughs> jinx anything. It just feel, it feels like uh, things are going well here. Do you want to thank Doc's Auto Clinic, Amp Valley Bank, Alpine Lumber, and Steamboat Dental Center, all proud supporters of Sailors Athletics here on KTYV 98.9. Also Mountain View Car Wash, Russell's Auto Salon, Steamboat Ace Hardware, and UC Health at Yampa Valley Medical Center. And you, Chris, Chris Puck of the Downtown Edward thank Jones you. Office, as well as Steamboat Resorts by Wyndham Vacation Rentals. All supporters here of Sailors Athletics, including boys soccer tonight. It's against Battle Mountain. Service from the far side on the ensuing corner kick turned into a header that went through the uprights, and it will be a goal kick now for Cruz Erickson. Looks to me like we've got somebody getting ready to check in here. Maybe Matt Curzon. Curzon. Yep. Senior night. It's important to uh, make sure these guys get in. I'd love to see Matt score again. He's got some goals this year, which is great, and... Uh, wouldn't it be neat if he got one tonight against Battle Mountain? Murphy Bowman will uh, check out of the game and likely has seen the last of his night with just under five to go. How exciting. 24 goals this season. Whether it's a tie, we did have somebody text in that they scored 24 goals back in 2001. We don't know if one of those goals was in the playoffs or not, but uh, all 24 Murphys came in the regular season and two against the previously unbeaten Battle Mountain team in the Western Slope, so pretty neat. And here comes Erickson again for another great service, or great, great defense. Battle Mountain was not able to get the pass up in the air to take advantage of Cruz being out of the goal. Barry makes a run, serves it up. Diegas is going to be there. And he served across, headed up, top of the 18. Bounces dangerously, but it'll be cleared out by Will Burskins. 3.48 to go, Chris. Come on, Nick. Get in there. one steamboat. Nick will not quit. He got it to Curzon. Taken back here is Juan Macias with a pass that goes a little too far there for Moeller. And before we have... 
this thrown from Jake Berry. More substitutions as I believe that is the wizard coming on for Nick Kosick. Noah Heckel into this one with 3.20 to go. And of course, Noah hasn't, hasn't seen any time yet tonight, but uh, you never know what the wizard can do. Fresh legs, a lot of enthusiasm. We could see something special out of the wizard. Here once more is Omi on the throw-in. Max was in the playoffs, and he had 22 in the regular season. Mac Knoll got yeah. 22. Oh, wow. We are finding out that Murphy. So what about Rin? That's the challenge, Casey. Um, yeah. who, who was that that came up here again? Something Rin, R-I-N-N. R-I-N-N was the guy. He was back in 01. Played with Roddy Bell. Roddy said that he scored that all and brought up the article. So let us know on that one if you know, Casey. Here now is a throw for Steamboat again, offensive half. Settled by Omi, tried to kick it up field, came right back to him, and taken now by Quezada, worked up again by Battle Mountain, and Quinn Connell tried to tackle it away, couldn't do it, and a chance for Battle Mountain late stages, great hustle from Brown, but a chance up that far side in the 18, Battle Mountain pressuring, oh, great job from Steamboat getting back, and Will they just Burst cut got short back. Sam got back to disrupt the play, and then Will was there to intercept the pass. Just good hustle to come back. And there is panic ensuing for Battle Mountain. They are trying to hustle everything they can. And uh, now the refs have, I guess they've got some uh, substitutions, substitutions coming in while the clock rolls down, which is in our favor and, and a good John thing. John Rin. Here comes Cole coming in as well for the last minute and a half. And it looks like everyone is there in the 18. And it'll be chased down by Battle Mountain. And it'll turn into a throw in for Steamboat deep in their own territory. 80 seconds left. Worked up field. It would take a miracle here for Battle Mountain to score three goals. I think it was a miracle that they got a penalty kick tonight. But uh, yeah. that's another story. Worked up. Viegas is going to have to settle with his feet here. That's away from him. But he'll chase it down and push it up field again. It'll get free. Headed along and just wide. Great chance there from Petrick. Your Steamboat Sailors are about to win this game. They haven't beaten Battle Mountain, from what my kids said, for about seven years. So if you were able to come down and see this happen for the first time in a long time, it's been great. It's a lot of fun. And I know some of the families that had their kids play through and not get to beat them are, are really enjoying this one to see it finally happen for the first time in a long time. And now a chance for Battle Mountain to try and possess but we're in the last half a minute here, and it's all just the yellow brick road and the end of it. I think our school is going to rush the field. This is this is our this is the type of situation where that's going to happen. Fifteen seconds left. So you might want to keep the video on that. Yeah, keep the video rolling if that happens there, Jackson. <laughs> and five seconds. The countdown begins. Yeah, and here they go. Your Steamboat Sailors <laughs> have <Cooper>. beaten. <laughs> <Congratulations to you. laughs> so proud of Big Brother and his team. Get out there, and uh, we're, we're really excited for these guys to finally get over that hump. The dam broke tonight, and they won 4-1. Pretty cool. I think everybody knew this was a big one. We'll see what that does for our playoff positioning. From what I'm hearing, may not be enough to bring us into a home playoff game, but it definitely will improve our positioning. Yeah, so we'll, we'll obviously have a, a chance to play a team that's maybe not, not the, the maybe not top ten, maybe someone in the low teens or something like that, and that would probably give us a better chance. You never know. You're going to have to beat them all if you want to win anyway. What a game. What a moment for your Steamboat Sailors. It's nice to have Casey back in, giving stats yeah. and giving some help. From you get to throw some question his way. Yeah. Anything we don't know, we just put out the – he is soccer's Google. Exactly. And when he's not, he's Google's Google for us. <laughs> Want to thank Doc's Auto Clinic, Campa Valley Bank, Alpine Lumber, Steamboat Dental Center, Mountain View Car Wash, Russell's Auto Salon, Steamboat Ace Hardware, UC Health at Yampa Valley Medical Center, my man to my left, each and every game, Chris Puckett at the downtown Edward Jones office, and Steamboat Resorts by Wyndham Vacation Rentals. A 4-1 to one victory. Your Steamboat Sailors finally break through against Battle Mountain here in boys soccer matchup with the win for Chris Puckett. I'm Vladen Chase saying so long from Gardner Field.
Thank you. Finally break through against Battle Mountain here in boys soccer matchup with the win for Chris Bucket. I'm Lawton Chase saying so long from Gardner Field. Thank you. Hi, this is Doc from Doc's Auto Clinic. When your car isn't feeling well, head over to Doc's for above and beyond customer satisfaction and the most expert service around. The techs at Doc's are ASC certified and go the extra mile to give you the peace of mind you need to know your vehicle is safe. We take care of you and your family by taking care of your car. We are located just past Moose on the west end of town off of Elk River Road. Doc's Auto Clinic, proud to support the Steamboat sailors. This is Skip Yerdorf from Alpine Lumber here at Steamboat Springs. Alpine Lumber is a Colorado company that is committed to being the best supplier of materials and related services 